Chris is working on that. I'll I'll get it done. I'll get it done, or I'll talk to Edwin about it. But let's use this for now. Because I. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode two of the Lemon City Live Pause Up Podcast, your podcast for all things FIU athletics themed. As always, I'm Jake Gibson. Alongside me is Kevin Baral, and we have a special guest today. It's our first guest of the show, only two episodes in. Now that is progress. So please welcome none other than Jonathan Mayer. How's it going, going on, guys? We're doing great, We're doing great. Obviously, we wrapped up football, but now we're kind of in the swing of things with with FI athletics, basketball, and baseball, yeah. softball. So it's good times here in Miami. Jonathan Mayer is a writer and reporter for Panther Now Sports. He's done football games. He's done basketball. He's done a bit of everything. And and but it, but his main his main source of uh, of FIU reporting comes from baseball, where he is. Uh, writer number one for Panther Now Sports, and he has been for a while. Of course, I know Johnny very um, well because he was one of my premier writers when I was the uh, director of sports at uh, Panther Now uh, for the last couple of years. Um, you, you also do some broadcasting work. I saw that you were able to uh, broadcast the Middle Tennessee game on the radio. Yeah, that was that was exciting. Especially yeah. how the game went, so that was that was a cool opportunity. For yeah, sure. yeah, I know, I know. You, you, and I have have called many a FIU athletics game, whether it was basketball or baseball, mm -hmm. through the um, FIU thirty nine thirty two program that was yeah. that's being done by AJ Ricketts. So it's awesome to see that kind of you moved up. You went from yeah. Mixler, all, all, all the struggles of connecting and making sure the mics are okay on Mixler. Oh, it's a radio. Talking to who, hundreds of people uh, yeah. on real radio. So that's super awesome. Uh, so Johnny's going to be joining us today talking about some FIU football starting off. As I'm sure you all have seen by now, the Panthers football season is over after a 28 to 33 loss to Middle Tennessee on uh, November 26th. They finished the season with a four and eight record. Missing out on a bowl game, it's a bit unfortunate, but you know you got to accept what it is. A four and eight record might not seem that great, but again, keep in mind, take a step back for a second. The last two years of FIU football and how Mike McIntyre has gone from one win in two seasons to four wins, including some, and a lot of those wins they were no joke. They were not fluke wins. So. Want to talk to you two today about your thoughts on what you saw in that final game, uh, in that final football game between FIU and Middle Tennessee. Closer, it was a lot closer than people than a lot of people uh, predicted online, and for the most part, FIU looked really into the game. It just came up short in the end. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you look at it. Uh, I think all of us here did not have FIU keeping it this close against Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. a very good team against a very good quarterback in Chase Cunningham, but. Hey, the FIU defense kept them in check. And I'll just read out Chase Cunningham's stats out here. I'm looking for them. Chase Cunningham. Here we go. 29 for 42, 279 yards, zero touchdowns. He rushed in for three. So they literally limited him to the pass game. Although his receivers did thrive, they really he couldn't connect to them in the end zone. And then you look at the start of the game. Johnny, you were there. I was there. The two fourth down drop, you know, at the red zone, they kept them, they held them down to fourth down. So they got those two field goals. And that was a huge, huge start for the FIU defense, especially when it came down the line where FIU kind of tried to hold down their lead and they unfortunately cannot. But we have to give a shout out to Hayden Carlson, the type of game he had, man. Although I know it was a costly game at the end with the four interceptions, but you know, you go 29 for 52, 414 yards, four touchdowns, four interceptions. Two of them were under throws. I think we could all agree on that one. And then the last two basically cost you the game, especially the pick six, but followed by. You're kind of in the red zone there. You're trying to – you're going to score most likely, and uh, you got picked off by the same player. I think it was Jacoby Thomas. So 
Uh, another shout out to Rivaldo Fairweather, who we'll talk about in a, in a, I think a more depressing light, but um, uh, became the main target of this game. You know, although the wealth was spread, I think we'd agree that it ended up being Rivaldo who had the big game uh, with eight receptions, 152 yards, three touchdowns. The only three touchdowns he scored this season, but the last one was was amazing. It was basically he, he mossed he mossed the FIU the MTSU defense there. And then finally, a uh, hundred yard receiving game from Dean Patterson. And I want to put the interview with Hayden Carlson. Uh, he gets a little emotional after Johnny asked him a question, so I'll put the whole interview in the press conference. And uh, here it is. Hayden, so just talk to Coach Mack. Uh, he said that he found out about two p.m. today that Grayson would not start. When did you? When were you notified that you were going to be starting? Um, pretty much the same time, two or three p.m. So it was kind of just a quick thing, but sure. Things with the emotions and feelings on first start, you know, what's what's going through your mind when you get that information? First and foremost, for sure, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to even, like, have the chance. I got to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that even gave me the opportunity to be on the field right now. You know, I, I know a lot of kids would love to do that, but um, I, I know I definitely have a lot to improve, you know, all those turnovers. Um, we were winning 28-27. I forgot to put the game away after a pick. That is what it is, but... I'm just really thankful to even have the opportunity to start, and you know, yes, sir. I'm ask about you know some of the passes in a second, but you know, just one more as far as the emotions of feelings. You've been here three years. You know, obviously, uh, Coach Davis said that had the season extended, you would have played a little bit. You know, was there any just personal satisfaction at least going, man, I'm finally on the field and getting a chance to play? For sure, definitely. There, there's definitely personal satisfaction there, but um, I'm just really proud of the team. Like, just. These three years, going through everything that's been going on and just the team we have now, I just know like the best is yet to come. And I was really thankful to like finally get on the, get on the field, you know, so. I'm going to ask you about two passes in particular. Can you take me through the TD pass to Josiah and then also take me through the, the um, TD pass, the, not the 75-yarder, but the yeah. one where he took, Volo took it off of the guys that took um, him those passes? So, Josiah, we, we called four verticals. They had we have this little like wing set with the two tight ends on one side, so they went and um, Josiah opened up in the seam. I kind of saw him too late. We were talking about it. I almost missed him. Like it was really close, but um, no, nah, he ran a great route and I hit him. I knew he, he's got sticky, so I know the, the tight ends. They always, they always talking about us feet, like feed us, feed us, like give us the ball. So for sure. And then the one to Valdo, the one in the corner. Valdo. So we like line up. And then we split him out. We see like if a corner is covering him, which he was, and we just give him a one-on-one -on -one chance. We know Valdo is going to come down with it. We're we're like the most confident with him doing that. So. Yes, and the last one for I went to these guys. Um, the last pick. You know, it looked yeah. like at least from our vantage point, we're down on the field. Yeah. Um, maybe you're trying to lead him a little bit more to the corner and just underthrew it. Is that what yeah, happened? Yeah. I mean, we just on the fly kind of came up with the same idea that we threw in the end zone to Valdo early in the game where he kind of took it on his head. Uh, on the in the red zone, we were thinking we were going to do that in the middle of the field. Um, they kind of double covered it. Maybe shouldn't have, should have extended the play or done something else. I just kind of floated up there, thinking Valdo was gonna be help me, but um, it was definitely I definitely should have done something else for sure. Yes, sir. Uh, Hayden, obviously tonight uh, full of emotions. Eric asked you a couple, but when that first touchdown pass connected, just talk to me. What, what was that like? Just finally getting that first touchdown pass on the board. Man, um, it felt really good, to be honest, 100%. Uh, I've been waiting for that for a long time, that feeling. And, um, again, like, I'm just really thankful to God like, that I was even on the field right then to throw that. So. And another thing I want to ask you about, um, talk about extending plays. You, you had a couple plays tonight where, you know, it seemed like you might have been done in the backfield or down or even out in the open field made a couple guys miss. Just talk to me about not only your confidence when you're throwing the ball, but when you're able to get out of the pocket and use your feet. Yeah, I mean, that's been a growing thing for me. I definitely feel like I, I need to improve in that still. Um, but it felt good making those making those couple moves. I, I haven't done that in a while, like in a game, like in a full stretch of a game. So it's felt good to just play like a full game through and through. Win or loss, it was just good to be out there for sure. Aiden, um, I'll ask you, Dean Patterson, I talked with Dean like back in the spring. We talked about, you know, you guys are the same team now. Yeah. You start tonight, he has 100 yards. Yeah. And you know you break in 14 yards. Talk about being able to finally be on this collegiate, you know, field playing together. You guys close played for That's years. crazy. My boy Dean, he made so many plays for me tonight, and like, I'm sorry, but like, I'm so happy for him, man. Like, he's such a great kid, and just shoot. Sorry. Hey.
Hey, you got one last one for you. you know, um, it really seems like you have an ability to push the ball downfield. You know, just talk about that part of the game a little bit. Um, I definitely feel like uh, me and the coaches, like, I, I do like to throw down the ball down the field a lot, and that kind of comes down to my de to like a detriment to me too. But not 100, percent I do I do like like to throw it down down the field a lot. And yes, sir. Thank Appreciate it. And there it is, Hayden Carlson. Wow. You you have to love the heart that uh, Hayden put into this game. I know, I know, I know. It was um, mixed results all around. Obviously, he he went he went ham with the passing yards. But I mean, again, four picks. Most teams won't win a game when they throw when they throw four picks in in, in any level of football. It's just that plain and simple. But uh, you got to you got to appreciate again. First start, first touchdown, broke a lot of records today in his in his um, first game at quarterback, and just. Uh, Johnny, again, again, you were there. Just talk to me about the uh, emotions throughout the entirety of the game. Of course, it being senior day, a lot of seniors last games at FIU. Just what was the overall feel like at the FIU football stadium? It's not the most impressive football year by all standards, but this was still a meaningful game nonetheless. It was, um, you know, coming into the game, you know, four and seven, you know, in this point, you know, bowl el no bowl eligibility, but still you want to get five wins, which would be really impressive. But I think a lot of people expected you did you didn't want to lose this one like you lost the last three. You wanted to be competitive at least or either win the game. And FIU did that. You know, we saw, you know, early on we were down 20 nothing. Um, you were able to get a touchdown um to, you know, before the half first half, before halftime, get the touchdown, which is really good. And then, you know, the way they played in the second half, but defensively they were really strong. Um, you know, Valdo, you can see, you know, eight catches, 150 yards, a lot of that came in the second half defensively they had really good stands but you know i think the emotions were high they wanted this win so much and mm -hmm. the way they played really looked like they, they could have carried this one and down 20 is so good and and then eventually you know you're you know was it i think there was a third down situation with three minutes left a pick a pick comes and unfortunately i thought you just couldn't hold and get and lose the game yeah uh and 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 like you said um he he had a lot to prove today, and and as he as he said in the um in that in that press conference, it's been three years, and he finally gets the call. Hey, you're starting. Best of luck. Um, gotta appreciate the uh, the love and respect that we that we're able to see again. The emotions filling up the tears um, when Johnny asked that question um, in in the press conference, and maybe it's maybe it really is too late for him to be the quarterback of the future, or maybe it's just too late to see this team evolve into next year with the players they already have, because we're going to talk about a bit more about that regarding the transfer portal, but it does bring hope, you know, momentum and hope. That's what I saw with this game. Yes, they didn't win, but it, but in some ways it really did feel like a win setting up the scene for next season. I will want to say this offense looked a lot better with, with Carlson under center against Grayson James and no knock on Grayson James. He had some great games, the LA tech game, the Bryant game, we could give those to him. A lot of these wins are thanks to, you know, Grayson James. But, man, Hayden Carlson looked good. And I think I think this is a good way to open this question up. But quarterback competition, Hayden Carlson versus Grayson James. Johnny, you think this happens? I mean, I think, you know, you're open to anything. But, you know, the way Grayson played, and he's kind of been that starter. But now you – you obviously, you know, you want competition. It's good to have that within a quarterback group. So I, I'm not going to not gonna say he's the stuff guy, but I think heading to spring – you know, we'll definitely see Grayson have that spot, but obviously we're open to, to, to all ears. I do think, you know, um, Grayson kind of deserves – obviously, honestly, I guess it's a question in the air, but I think both players have played really well. Yeah. But I think we'll see in spring the comp competition, but both guys, you know, especially Grayson over the course, obviously a bit struggles, but they both have looked really good. And we'll see what, what the question answer is, you know, in spring and then heading to fall of 2023. It, it's a tough decision, and I don't envy Mike McIntyre when he has to make that decision before the beginning of next season, who's going to be the starting quarterback, if, if it's going to be Grayson, if it's going to be Carlson, or if it's going to be someone they pick up, uh, the, someone that they recruit or, or pick up from the transfer portal in, in, in the coming months. But definitely a lot of positions that they're going to need to focus on, especially now more than ever, because one of the biggest things that we've seen these past few days is, is FIU players and some big name FIU players leaving the Panthers, entering the transfer portal in hopes of going to an, to another team to jumpstart their stats, get some highlight reels going for the pros, whenever they want to do that. Um, 
I have a list right here. The two biggest ones, without a doubt, is wide receiver Tyrese Chambers, who, if I'm not mistaken, didn't play, didn't didn't even play in the Middle Tennessee. He did game. not play the Middle Tennessee game. Play. Um, so that that's a big weapon for FIU. That's that's going to be unfortunately leaving them along with tight end Rivaldo Fairweather, w- w- one of the sparks on the offense. Him along with Flex Joseph were two of the biggest playmakers this offense had, and uh, some other some other uh, key players uh, and just role model athletes like defensive back Andrew Vollmer, linebacker Gaithan Bernadell, and wide receiver Jacoby Hewitt, also booking it out of FIU. and And I'm I'm not saying I I, I disagree with their decisions. It absolutely makes a lot of sense for these players to leave FIU because you can look at it you, you can look at it from this way. They need to build. And, and I spoke about this a bit in episode one. These players need to build highlight reels, make plays, show scouts why they're good enough to be drafted or signed into the NFL. And even if not in the NFL, into some of the other football leagues like the CFL, uh, USFL, XFL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if they see if, if they see that they're not doing that at FIU, then they, then they'll want to go to a college that does. But um, just what are your general thoughts? Like how 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 big of a blow will it be? for FIU football moving forward to lose two of the biggest players, some of the all pro first team players that FIU has had being Chambers and Fairweather. Well, very quickly, I want to um, just track back a little very, very quickly to the middle Tennessee game. And John Jonathan had not arrived yet because he was at Boca coming back from, I believe it was spotting CBS. So uh, we go down to the field and we see immediately Grayson James is limping, you know, well, Oh, this is not good. And I reported this. I, I said, Grayson James comes out of the tunnel limping. Uh, did not take any reps at all. But he was suited up, looked like he was going. Little movement. Tyrese Chambers was nowhere to be seen. That Eric confirmed that he will not be playing Eric Henry. Uh, SB Nation, funny enough, we're both working for the same company. But um, he is not playing. Tyrese not playing. No, not out there for special team warm-ups. Not out there for normal warm-ups. But he did come out for the senior, um, I guess, ceremony, you could call it. Um he he had his uniform on, but did not you know not not in full gear. So you kind of assumed, especially right when they put Tyrese Chambers, because you know we were there, Johnny, for the Tuesday press conference. Nothing was mentioned about Chambers being um, pr- uh, honored that day. You you asked a question about the seniors being honored. He was not a senior who was mentioned until the day of, which it was it brought up questions like, ooh, this guy either is leaving or they're doing this because he's undecided about coming back or not. So. Uh, and, you know, the day after he announces he's not coming back. So I really, very, very quickly want to mention the, the teams that have already offered him um, a spot for 2023. UCF, West Virginia, Middle Tennessee, funny enough, Georgia Southern, Arizona State, Marshall University, Appalachian State, a.k.a. App State, uh, Western Kentucky, University of Carolina at Charlotte, and Louisville. Those are those all add up to 10 colleges. So Chambers has a lot of spots to choose from. Uh, I doubt he goes to to Charlotte, the 49ers. I doubt he goes there. But um, any other college I could see him go to, we're talking about this, Jake, that it would be a little surprising if he stays in Conference USA um, just with the competition that he could play outside of the Conference USA, which, although I will say, this conference has gotten a lot better and it will get better as the years go by. But you could go to somewhere like Louisville where you're going to play some top-tier talent. So yeah, I would like to see where he goes, but... Uh, I, I expect them to get a lot more offers, uh, you know, as the days go by. Same with Rivaldo Fairweather, who unfortunately did transfer. I, I saw this tweet. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I saw that. I think this is from Eric Henry that they said he can maybe play for the University of Miami. And that makes a lot of sense for someone like Fairweather with Will Malroy now out. You know, he's a senior. He, he's gone. There's a tight end spot open and Fairweather would make a lot of sense there. He would be getting a lot of the first. He'd maybe be wide, the first target for this team besides Xavier Restrepo on on um, Miami. So, and then the other two names, Rivaldo, um, ooh, sorry, Andrew Volmar, not a little, not surprising at all. Two years of eligibility left. He could get it at, he could go to a um, bigger school and see what he does there. And then Gaithan Bernandel, who sucks to see go because he was one of the guys who I spoke to with the most, but unfortunately he's gone and he had himself a nice season. All of these guys wishing them the best. I think they'll go to some great schools, have some great success and, Hopefully, see them in the NFL soon or any other league, as you mentioned, Jay. Yeah, and going back to Tyrese Chambers because uh, uh, Jonathan and I, we 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 had a sort of special connection, you could say, with Tyrese Chambers. Uh, Johnny had that really wonderful profile 
uh, that was published on Panther Now's both website as well as their magazine. I want to say it was uh, during late 2020. I want to say. Um, oh, no, 2021. Like 2021, yeah. right, right. But uh, you know, it, it it was Tyrese was super open, just talking about his his journey to get to FIU, coming out of a uh, JUCO college, not much, not not much money available, and to sort of, and to break out to FIU, set a bunch of wide receiver records, Conference USA records. Mm-hmm. And to be just one of the dominant faces of the program for the last few years, to see him go really hurts. It really hurts. And unfortunately, you 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 could have started to make these assumptions after that Western Kentucky game early in the year, shut out seventy three to nothing, and then all of Tyrese's um, all of his decisions on social media to start unfollowing uh, FI, FIU things and taking FIU out of his bio, out of his profile picture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of felt like the relationship there, at least for me, was was starting to slowly dwindle away, and we've reached the ultimatum now, where yes, he's going to go to a different team, and it sucks, you know. I I I, I love Tyrese, and I I've had the chance to talk to him many times, not just in the um, post game interviews, but also just just talking about him again with the profile that Johnny was able to to do and. That, that, that was an award-winning profile, might, might I add. It won some SPJ awards uh, in the state of Florida for uh, – what was it? It was like best sports story for yeah. uh, collegiate media um, programs. Uh, took home gold in that, so kudos <laughs> to that, Johnny. We'll, we'll link it in the bio. We'll link it in yeah, the yeah, bio. Yeah, link in bio for that one. It's, it's, it's a wonderful read. I absolutely recommend it. Um, and to, uh, like I said, to see him go is just – Absolutely heartbreaking, but I absolutely understand. I, I understand it and support it 100. percent In Mike McIntyre's case, you just got to move on. You have to find the next big thing in the wide receiver. Obviously, South Florida is just teeming with talent in the high school level. There's probably 20 to 30 wide receivers that Mike McIntyre could pick out that that would want to play for FIU and would want to give it their all. Maybe they're the right replacement. So, and I was, I was just gonna add, though, adding yeah. to that, you know, you look at what, what Coach Mack did, you know, before, into 2022, the season, he went the FCS route, Juco route. You look mm-hmm. at Donovan Manuel, who's one of the top tacklers. He comes from FCS or, you know, Jalen Bracey, one, another emerging receiver. You know, he's also going to look that route. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's worked in their favor. So, you know, a lot of the guys from G5, they're always they're going to transfer out. But for FIU, there's still talent across in football. So I think FIU will find ways to – get talented guys that are good in those, in those FCS Juco's routes and uh, mm-hmm. they'll bring them to your FIU and, and it's, and it's worked. We've seen with Chambers and yeah. a lot of other guys. And I want to quickly mention that what FIU has currently a wide receiver right now is pretty dang good. We, we spoke about it. Dean Patterson, Chris Mitchell, Jalen Bracey, they have some good wide receivers. And I think I wrote an article on this on why the FIU wide receiver core may be one of the best in, well, will be one of the best in conference USA down the line because they really will. I, I do believe that. And although you lose a huge tight end in, in Rivaldo Fairweather, you still have Josiah Meehan, who yeah. maybe will start getting those reps, got a touchdown in that last game against MTSU. Johnny, how do you feel about this receiver core moving on now? Yeah, I'm, I'm really high on this receiving core. Obviously, we lose Tyrese, but, you know, there's so many guys that are behind that have, like, a, a lot of pedigree. Chris Mitchell, who finally got his his breakout year, had really good moments. He was the number two, kind of saw himself there. Talking mm-hmm. about Bracey, Dean Patterson, who, you know, I was so high on, you know, last spring and i was i'm so happy for him to be able to get the 100 yards game to kick, finish off the year so you know those guys i'm going to expect to bring in more guys to transfer out some recruits as well so this is a, a good proceeding core and i know that you know you have a lot of guys that grace and james had in year one you can always expect he'll even look even better in year two with a lot of these guys that'll probably return with bracy and patterson and mitchell Moving forward now um, with FIU football. Before we get to our news break, let's just talk a bit about our final thoughts on the season. Again, I'll I'll, uh, re- I'll reiterate here: went four and eight, uh, ended the uh, season on a four-game losing streak. Two and four at home, two and four on the road, two and six in the conference. Uh, obviously, the wins were not there to get FIU into a bowl game. Uh, Though to their credit, n- no one else in South Florida did either. You know, uh, yeah. with FAU and the University of Miami, it was just not a great year for uh, college football in South Florida. Just what are your general thoughts on how this football season went? I personally, I think it, it definitely went over expectations. Um, I think FIU is one of the uh, 
they, they were on the list of college football teams that went over the projected win-loss record prior to the season beginning. And uh, I can't remember what it was for FIL. The one of say was around two to three, and they hit four. Um, Mike McIntyre, again, for his first year to put up four wins with a team that had a fresh coaching staff. The majority of the squad was brand new, either freshmen or from the transfer portal. And just in, in a program and with an athletic group here in FI Athletics that is also entering a brand new year, um, their first year with, of course, Scott Carr being in the reins now as athletic director. I think FIU has has overachieved. And 4-8 and eight might not look like overachieving, but again, you just have to keep in mind about what this program currently is. And with that said, I, I, I do think that this was a pretty good season for the FIU Panthers, all things considered. Yeah, and, and another player we have to give a lot of props to is Lexington Joseph, also known as mm. Flex Joseph. He had a great season. I mean, 108 yeah. attempts, 536 rushing yards, five touchdowns, five per average. This was um, maybe the most used part of the offense, the running back core, EJ um, Wilson, Kijan Owens, who I think we'll see more of next season, and then Lexington Joseph. I mean, you have to give props to what they've done there. Unfortunately, the offensive line was extremely banged up throughout the season. Very little experience on there. Very, very young guys. I mean, FIU was one of the youngest teams in Conference USA, so makes sense to see that there. But, you know, I think now with a full year of experience, that running game will definitely, uh, I guess, flourish a little bit more under that offense. I like the play of Grayson James, as we mentioned prior. I really did like what I saw there. Um, I guess Tyrese Chambers had his worst season in FIU, but, I mean, still a pretty dang good season for what the numbers were there. Yeah. The court took a huge step forward. I'm excited to see what they'll do next year. And I think a lot of you know media outlets were saying FIU would not win a single game this year, and they proved them wrong right away with that win against Bryant, and it ended, unfortunately, with a loss against MTSU. But there's a lot to be excited about this defense show that they they are for real. I mean, especially that last game against MTSU. We looked at that one, holding Brian State to how they did uh, through those overtimes. The LA Tech game going into two overtimes. I mean, FIU has some studs on this team, and I am super duper excited to see what they'll do next year. And um, finally, we'll have a full chance to cover the full season. So I'm excited for that too on my personal end. Yeah, I'm just adding on, you know, before I get my thoughts, I want to give a shout out to Sean Peterson Jr. He yep. had a really, yeah, really good season. Yeah. Uh, six sacks uh, for him this year. And mind you, he was a running back his first four years, and he finally made the switch to linebacker. That's one of the best decisions I think that that, that coach Mac, you know, gave to him. And you see that he he, he can really be a dangerous guy in conference USA. I think I'll have a really good year next year. But overall, my thoughts look, you said it, you guys said it, you know, no one, most people thought this team would win one game or, or no games. And they were able to, to win four, and and they won four through with four games left in the year. Obviously, you know, you, you would we would have loved to have a bowl opportunity. We had a shot to, but still, oh, nice. yeah, got to be realistic. Yeah, but I think I think it's four games in one, year one of a, of a of a build is really is really good to see. Um, but yeah, the, like you know, we just started. You, you, I think next year you want to go for that bowl game, and a lot of guys that are start, have that got their first couple snaps. They're obviously going to play way, way better in year two. Grace James is back. A lot of guys are back, and I, I do think this team is is going to be really good. And then we also have a recruiting cycle for Coach McIntyre. So yeah. a lot of things are building up, but overall a good season to start, to build with, and just exciting for what, what's what's to come under Coach Mack. Yeah. And I want to mention this time Coach Mack will have a lot more time to recruit. Last mm -hmm. season, you know, he came – right away and had to get going right away and he actually he, slept in dorms for for a couple of weeks he slept in dorms i saw the, yeah. the press yeah. conference so lake view south i can tell you lake view south yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a wild time for coach mac but he'll he'll have his own time now and uh thankfully this this process would would be done um i think in a lot more patient manner it, it'll be a lot more patient for him a lot slower for him you know it doesn't have to be with his pressure and quickness that he had to do it in 2021 so yeah i'm excited to see what's to come there so let's do something real quick with FIU football. Let's so um, myself, Kevin, and Johnny. Let's go over our what we think the highest point of the season was and what the lowest point of the season one is. And I'll go first. I think the highest point of the season for FIU football was their win against Louisiana Tech on uh, October 28th. It was coming off a very impressive road win against the Charlotte 49ers, and it was a 
wild game, lots of scoring, went to double overtime to determine who won the game, but it was the FIU Panthers that came out on top. On a two-game winning streak, there was just momentum to give for the FIU Panthers. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out the way we wanted, but it was just still a great feeling that maybe Mike McIntyre really can turn this thing around, you know, beat some conference opponents. That's something that the Panthers haven't done in, in years. And the lowest point of the season, I, I think it would be easy to say the West Kentucky game, right? Losing 73 to nothing on the road, statistically the worst loss in FIU program history. But that's not my lowest point of the season. I think the lowest point of the season was actually the uh, loss at home to FAU. And I, I know the FIU-FAU rivalry has not been on the Panthers' side in a very long time. Last win against the Owls was in 2016. But this was the most even matchup, in my opinion, between FIU and FAU record and statistic-wise in a very long time. And FIU, that game looked incompetent. They did not look ready to play. They let, in my opinion, a mediocre team just run all over them, literally. And to get blown out like that, 52 to 7 at home with bowl game, uh, with bowl game eligibility on the line, it really stung. And again, it was against uh, an opponent that the students and the fans just don't like. I, in my four years, I didn't see FIU beat FAU, and I'm still waiting to see that. Um, so I'll say highest point of the season, Louisiana Tech game the lowest point of the season, the FAU game. Uh, what say you, Kevin? All right, so I'll agree with you. Louisiana Tech has to be the highest point of the game. I mean, you're just a couple games away from bowl eligibility. You have to feel good about yourself. And then the lowest point, I had FAU, but I'm going to change it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little bit different here. And I'm going to go with the, the UTS, the UTEP game. When mm -hmm. they lost that one, you lost bowl eligibility right there. It's like, oh, dang, you know, after such highs that this team was going on, Unfortunately, it was on a two-game losing streak, but you, you you could have beat UTEP. I mean, you had a good chance at it. I mean, the odds weren't the best, but you always have to go into thinking that this team has a good chance about mm -hmm. of winning each game. And, you know, although FAU was probably the lowest point of the season, UTEP was probably as low there or just a little higher. But I will go UTEP. You lose your bowl eligibility. Other guys are down. Mac is probably down. And um, going into Middle Tennessee, kind of playing for nothing, just to see what this team could look like in 2023. Um, that is kind of, I, I think, the low point for me there in this season. But yeah, what say you, Johnny? Yeah, I'm gonna agree with the, you too. Uh, the Latte game was was the highest moment. You, what were we were four and four? Yeah, into that game, and yeah, it was just good thrills. I was on, actually, I remember I was on the field when they finally got that stopped to win the game, and just you could feel all the excitement and buzz, like. You know, we're two games away from from bowl eligibility. Like no one could have thought that, and we feel we we just felt really good. But I, I gotta say honestly, the lowest point was that West Kentucky game because you know seven three to nothing is is not great at all. And look, the team could have they could have said, hey, we're we're done. Like you know, who cares? Like we they could have quit, but they 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 fought. If I'm correct, the week after they beat Mexico State, they got their first you know FBS win in three years, the first road win in four years. Like and they kind of kept fighting, but. The, the Western game was was not great to watch, um, but it was a a, 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 time, a moment in this in this program of you know we have young guys and they're going to improve each and every week, and we saw the improvement go along over the course of the season. That and look like this team did not look like the Western team that they played in, in what was it week three? So completely different. And last thing for FIU football, let's go over our uh, M, our MV our MVP of the Panthers. Um, it can be a player, it can be a coach, it can be whatever. But coach. for me personally, I'm going to give the MVP of this FIU season to Flex Joseph. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Lexington Joseph. He was the spark on offense, even through FIU's worst games this season. He still had great numbers, led the team in in uh, pretty much every rushing stat, and he was even up there in receiving as well. Um, I think Lexington Joseph has done more than enough to earn a spot on the either first team or second team conference USA uh, roster. And like I said, he, he, he was a spark. There, there were some low moments in this, in this season that we talked about, but even through those low moments, Lex Joseph has sort of secured that spot into being one of the best uh, running backs uh, in, in the conference. So Kevin, who's your MVP? Ooh, I think I'm, I think I may be stealing Johnny's guy here. If I say this guy, but I'm going to go Sean Patterson here. 
And uh, man, he had a nice season. The six sacks Johnny mentioned, just the story behind, you know, his story coming up to FIU. I believe he was a walk on. You can correct me if I'm wrong there. He gave a story in one of the Tuesday pressers. I believe it was right before the FAU game or yeah, that one. So um, or, or the one after who knows, but. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it to Sean Peterson. I had a couple other guys in mind, you know, Rivaldo Fairweather. You could even give the MVP to Mac McIntyre for what he's done to, to to change this program. And you mentioned coach. It has to be McIntyre. But I'm going to go Sean Peterson here. I'm sorry if I stole your guy, Johnny. Oh, no. I was I was actually in between one other person. But I'll, I'll do coach and player. That works. Okay. Right. Okay. Player, Gaithan, Ber- Gaithan Bernadelle. Um, okay. Yeah, he, he transferred out today. So, But he had a really good season defensively. 103 tackles. One and a half sacks. Um, if I'm correct, he had the most. He had over 100 tackles. This is the first time in like three years for an FIU's history. He had a really good season. He was like this. This linebacker core was really solid this year, and I was glad to watch him play. Unfortunately, you know he's transferring out, but he was looking good. And he said it. I think I think MVP coach is, is Mike McIntyre. You know for what you know what this team looked like the past two years. One in 16. Just the, one of the worst FBS teams coming in, and, and for what he was able to do and turn around quickly, get four wins. It just shows that this rebuild or build is going to take. It's going to be really quick, and I'm excited for 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 what's to come. And I do think this this is a bull team heading into 2023. Yeah, and I quickly want to mention. Um, this was reported 51 minutes ago. FIU said to extend its partnership with Adidas. So, hey, I guess yeah. that's, that's that's some breaking news there. 50 <laughs> minutes late, but you know, cool to see some more some more FIU swag with the uh, uniforms and the merch. Never hurt never hurts anyone, you know. Um, I forgot. You know what? I forgot to add. You new uniform this year. They, they were yeah. great. And you gotta also, love the new unis, yeah. you know? I can't forget also the helmets. Chef, just, uh, chef's the steel designs, too. Also, yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. to Scott Carr. That vice design. The vice, the vice. That no. vice design. My goodness. Yeah. And so just like that, the road to the 2023 FIU football season begins. I believe their first game is on Thursday, August 31st, at home against the Maine Black Bears. I'll be there. open up the season in 2023. So the road road to that has begun. And just like that, it's time for a pause up podcast news break. I'll take over and go over some news around the world of FIU conference USA and so on and so forth. Let's start with some brand new head coaches in conference USA football, starting off with our rivals to the North F a U the former coach of Texas. Tom Herman has accepted the F a U job and will become the brand new coach for the Owls effective next season. The Owls have, did not make it to a bowl game, so he will begin his journey with the Owls next year. He's going to replace Willie Taggart who was fired after the 5 and 7 start or the 5 and 7 season. What's what's interesting about that is that Willie Taggart Jr. is still on the team. FI, FAU football even tweeted out a happy birthday for Willie Taggart Jr. Like a happy birthday post only a few days after he was fired, after his dad was fired. So that's a bit interesting. But new coach for FAU, now following in FIU's footsteps of sort of rebranding a bit. And we'll see where that takes them now. Hopefully no better than us. And UAB, this was actually uh, announced only a uh, couple of days ago, but the University of Alabama Birmingham is hiring former NFL quarterback Trent Dilfer as their head coach. He's replacing their former head coach. Uh, let me just get my statistics here. Trent Dilfer, by the way, was actually prior to the head coach at Lipscomb Academy, which was a high school in Tennessee. He Not really any real relation to uh, UAB, but it, it, it really feels like the um, – Jeff Saturday move with the Indianapolis Colts to hire a, a player with pretty much no, aside from high school, no coaching experience in the collegiate level or even the professional level, though I believe Trent Dilfer did work for um, ESP on the Monday Night Football crew for a few years as well. So those are the two big coaching hires in um, Conference USA. Moving on over to national college football, the Rose Bowl has agreed to a deal that will help allow the college football playoff system to expand from four teams up to 12 beginning as early as 2024. This will pretty much secure spots for most uh, conference champions to compete for the coveted uh, college football playoff trophy. And 
I've always been a big believer that eight was the perfect number for the college football playoff. I'm okay with 12 as well. It's a bit complicated, but as you do, it's going to be interesting to see how the college football playoff and bowl game system moves forward. Now that there's going to be so many more games involved in deciding who is going to be the ultimate champion of college football year in and year out. And one last story for the news break. It's a recent one. T.Y. Hilton, arguably the best FIU uh, football alumni ever, former uh, receiver for the uh, Indianapolis Colts. I say former because he recently removed the Indianapolis Colts from his Twitter bio. And this, as we saw with um, Tyrese Chambers, this usually means that T.Y. Hilton is definitely on his way out. He's been uh, T.Y. has pretty much been in free agency hell with the Indianapolis Colts, is not current, is not currently on the active roster, and it's been rumored that he will be signing with a new team in the coming weeks, and this is likely the first sign of that. As always, removing your team from your Twitter bio, that's just the big sign these days that you're out your way. Um, so that was the Pause Up podcast news break. So... Let's get into the next part of the show, which is going over this past week in Conference USA. Let's go over the scores here. As we discussed earlier, Middle Tennessee knocks off FIU 33-28. to The big game that happened this week at Conference USA that we, that we need to quickly talk about, Western Kentucky with a drop and a heartbreaker on the FAU Owls in Boca Raton by a score of 32 to 31, knocking the Owls out of bowl game uh, eligibility and uh, and causing the Owls to inadvertently fire their head coach. A, an absolutely crushing loss for the Owls that makes the FIU season just feel a little bit better. <laughs> and the University of North Texas at home took care of the Rice Owls a bit closer than we predicted last week by a score of 21 to 17. Rice has not had a great season. The University of North Texas has. So to see the score this close is a bit shocking. Uh, UAB uh, puts up 37 against the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. This was the only game this week in Conference USA that was not decided by one by one score. It was a uh, two possession lead for UAB ending the game there by a score of 37 to 27. And then the UTEP Miners put on a valiant effort against their rival UTSA Roadrunners, but come up short in the end, losing by a score of 31 to 34. Uh, and it's University of Texas, San Antonio, and North Texas competing in the uh, Conference USA Championship. So pretty, a, a really a really great week for some high-quality football in Conference USA. And again, that FAU game, oh my goodness. If you haven't seen the highlights, it, it really is worth checking out how that game ended. And uh, the aftermath of that game is even crazier. I want to get to Johnny here. He was there. He was spotting for yeah, CBS. Yeah. What were your thoughts on that yeah. game? Yeah, that was that was a close game. I mean, it's surprising Western Kentucky, they couldn't, uh, you know, I thought they would, you know, I will say blow up, but, you know, take take care of business. But, you know, it was a hot hot day on, on a Saturday or yeah, Saturday in Boca. It was FAU made it close. Um, if I'm correct, FAU, they had a, what was it? I think it was a 46-yard field goal mm -hmm. by the freshman kicker. If he made it, the game's over. He just barely made it, went all the way left. And went to overtime, and then Western FIU got the points, and then Western got got the points. They went for a two point conversion, and in the end, the Hilltoppers took the win. And um, you know, disappointing loss. I think both teams played very well. I think FIU actually played better than Western Kentucky, but you know, sometimes well, FIU's been that type of team. I think a lot of their losses this year have been like yeah. decided by like a couple points, and is what it is. But uh, you know, they move up to the uh, American Conference, mm -hmm. and uh, they're no more no more uh, conference USA for football. As oh, they team. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FAU is one of the uh, conference teams that are heading to the AAC. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it, it, it means that also... the Sugar Bowl is like no longer a guarantee. Um, I'm sure oh, yeah. it, for the next few years, or, maybe. Both well, I know that the Sugar Bowl will restart in 2024. Mm -hmm. having a bowl, so we'll have that back. And so, I want to ask: This is the end of uh, Nikosi Perry and FAU, right? Or does he have another year of eligibility? I think he exhausted it. I think he's, this is it for Nikosi. So, so it's time to find a the former team. Yeah. 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 All right. Speaking of conferences, let's go over this week in the conference championship. It is conference championship week. And with Johnny and Kevin here, I want to go over our predictions for what how we feel this weekend will go for some big name opponents. A lot of top 25 teams battling to uh, 
secure potential spots in the college football playoff or at the very least some very nice bowl games. Let's go down the list. Here, here, who we're all taking this week. Let's start off with, of course, Conference USA, which will be uh, on Friday at 7.30. can be watched on CBS Sports Network. It's North Texas and UTSA, the Roadrunners. Again, two straight years in a row that they're going to be competing for that Conference USA championship. I'm going with the University of Texas, San Antonio, wow. in a very close one. Who won last year? UTSA? Yep. Yep. I'm gonna go UT. I'm gonna go UTSA. I love this match. This is gonna be a very, very fun game. But I think it'll end up in UTSA's favor. They've had a great season and they've been able to hold off a lot of good teams. They've kept it close this these past couple of games. It's been some close games, especially this last week. Very, very close. And I know they had another close game earlier this season as well. So yeah. maybe it's gonna be a lot closer than we expect. And UNT ends up kind of upsetting UTSA here, but uh, I believe it's Frank. Ha- I want to say Frank Harris is a QB for them. And mm-hmm. he, he's phenomenal. He's gonna, he's maybe the best QB in conference USA or one of the best. So uh, excited to see that matchup. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with uh, Kevin here. I think UTSA is, is going to, I mean, both teams are really good. I think both teams played really close with each other back in the Alamo Domes, but I think UTSA pulls us off. Um, you know, they've had a really good season and I just think they'll cap it off. They're also going to the America. They want probably want to, Send it off with the back-to-back championship. So I think UTSA gets the victory. Yeah. Moving on to the Pac-12. And again, we get into some ranked battles here that will ultimately decide the way the uh, AP Top 25 will look heading into bowl games. The U- the number 11 Utah Utes battling the number four USC Trojans. If the Trojans want any shot to get into the college football playoff, this is a must-win game for them against a very strong Utah team that has exceeded expectations. That'll be also on Friday at 8 p.m. on can be seen on Fox. This I- I'm really feeling an upset alert here um, for Utah. Again, tough environment. Uh, one of those hard-nosed football teams that doesn't get a lot of uh, media exposure against USC, uh, who, who is who I believe, along with UCLA, is leaving Pac-12 in favor of, I believe, the Big Ten uh, next year or, or in the next couple of years. I'm doing it. I'm taking Utah in the major upset. Unfortunately, I think USC's uh, college football championship hopes are going to get upset here by the Utah Utes. I'm going to go with the USC. I like USC. They've been extremely good. New coach, I believe it's Lincoln Riley. That's his name. And then you have mm-hmm. quarterback Caleb Smith, um, another great QB. So I, I'm going to go here with, with USC. You, you can't doubt that team. They've been phenomenal this season. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking the Trojans to win this one. You know, it was Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams. They've looked really good towards the end of the oh, year. Yeah. So I'll take them for a Pac-12 title and obviously keeping themselves in the, uh, the uh, CFB. Yeah. Moving on to the Big 12 now. It's going to be the first game on Saturday uh, starting at noon and can be seen on ABC again. The TCU Horn Frogs. No one really expected TCU in the beginning of the season to be even be considered to be in the top 10, top 5, and to be considered in the college football playoff championship is massive for them. And you look at their strength of schedule, they're for real. and they're But they're taking on a very good – uh, Kansas State Wildcat team who is ranked number 10. I, I'm not feeling an upset for this one. TCU knows that they want to impress the country. They want they don't want to uh, even be considered on that upset alert. Uh, give me the Horned Frogs here. And I think they actually win rather easily. I'm also going to go with the Horned Frogs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking TCU. They've had a really – this will be a fun game, though. Yeah. In state, but I'll take TCU. They've had a really – I've been really impressed by them. I'm excited yeah. to watch them this year. I think Kansas State keeps it close for three quarters, and then the fourth TCU just kind of runs away with it. And uh, okay. on to the MAC. Not a, not a, not every great conference championship game has to be against ranked opponents. Toledo versus Ohio again. Again, if you don't follow the MAC or some of these smaller conferences, this may seem like an like a like a strange battle. But the, these two teams again are very good and. Looking at the FIU realm, these are these are some top quality teams that FIU would play if they ever did. It's e- going to be even. I'll go with Toledo here. Okay, I have a, I'm going to do the Jack Harlow here, and I'm going to say I have a friend that goes to Ohio, and I'm going <laughs> to go with Ohio taking this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going Ohio. I, I remember I think they knocked off FAU, so mm-hmm. I'll take I'll take Ohio. They're they're a, a sneaky team that has looked good 
And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take I'll take the Bobcats. On to the Sun Belt, starting at three thirty, and can be seen on ESPN. The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers against the Troy Tro- the uh, Troy Trojans. What name? Coastal Carolina is a very uh, very young football program that in the past couple of years, it's 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 kind of like the opponent under them, UCF, that has just sort of sparked in talent these last few years. I'll go with Coastal Carolina here. Um, I will say I don't know that much about um, Troy's team thus far, but again, kudos to them for making it this far. But I'll go with Coastal Carolina. Just have a good gut feeling. Uh, I will go with the gut feeling as well, and I'll go Coastal Carolina. Yeah, I'll take Coastal as well. Um, you know, there's surprisingly no Louisiana, which usually is, has been, or even the App State, which are both really good teams. You know, I mean, it's good to see, you know, now Coastal and, and Troy battling off, but uh, I'll take the Chanteliers uh, over Troy. Mm hmm. Moving on now to the AAC, you're going to see a lot of familiar conference opponents competing for this championship game next year. This will just be seen at 4 p.m. on ABC. The University of Central Florida Knights, arguably the best team in the state of Florida right now. you are got to be up there with Florida State as well. Um, going up against uh, the Tulane Green Wave, who have, i got to say, some of the cleanest uniforms I've seen in, con- in uh, college football this season. Um Again, I don't I don't want to say upset alert. I think going to be close until the end when UCF will pull away. I'll take the Knights in this one. I'm also going to go upset alert. I'm going with the UCF Knights. Mm. I'll take the same. Uh, Tulane has been really good. But I know UCF, they, UCF did knock off Tulane in, in the same place mm. New Orleans. So I, I know that Tulane wants the revenge, but I think UCF, um, either they lost a good, a good one against USF, but I think they will take the championship before they head to the Big 12. And the before we keep Scott going, Martin. before we keep going, I want to ask: What are the conference USA teams that are leaving, or is it only FAU? Uh, it's it's FAU, Rice, UTSA, UAB, um, North Texas. Mm-hmm. Jeez. And there's one more. There, yeah, there's one more. It's it, Southern Miss, right? Not Southern Miss. No. Um, well, you know, Southern Miss. And Marshall, I think, are leaving too. Yeah, already they already left. Older yeah, they, they 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 already left. Um, a, lot of, a lot of teams, right? The, this this yeah. is just the beginning of a crazy period for this conference. Where I think that's all the teams. I think I've seen one more, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what's the conference at now? How many teams? It would be very little, right? It would be I believe four teams remaining. <laughs> but but again, keep in mind that they're going to be adding four teams as well, mm-hmm. uh, being. Um, Sam Houston uh, State. Liberty, yeah, yeah, Sam Houston State, Liberty, New Mexico State, who FIU played earlier this season, and uh, Jacksonville State. Okay, so they're rebuilding that conference there. But, yeah. but, but I, I was thinking about this before we move on. I was thinking, you know, FIU, you, know, you look at the upcoming upcoming you know, schedule, you bring a lot of FCS foes, you put you in a spot where FIU really has a good opportunity to, to get to a bull appearance. Obviously, you keep Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. You know, those are really good teams that we're seeing. But, you know, you bring up Sam Houston State, Jacksonville State. You know, you beat New Mexico State. Liberty's good. But still, those are teams that fought you with a chance to, to play well against. And, you know, you can you all of a sudden you can look for a bowl appearance in 2023. Mm-hmm. Yep. The other opponent was Charlotte, by the way. That is uh, heading to the uh, AAC. So it's UAB, FAU, Charlotte, North Texas, Rice, and UTSA. It's so weird that Charlotte would go after their season, you know? Yeah. It would be nice to it was Charlotte. That was the one that yeah. left behind. It's weird. After the season they had, the changes they have had to go through, mm-hmm. they would leave Conference USA, which I'm not going to say it's a, it's not a hard divi- a hard division to play, in, an easy division to play in, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's a little bit easier than the other ones, I would say, at least. Yeah. Moving on, we have we have five more games uh, on Saturday as well for, to decide conference championships. Going up, starting off with the Mountain West at 4 p.m. on Fox, the Fresno State Bulldogs and the Boise State Broncos again, two schools that don't get that much media attention and are don't get that many broadcasted games. But I like what I'm seeing with Boise State. They, of course, they have those crate that that crazy blue turf that they're known for, and yeah. I, I they 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 put together yet again another great year, another great not talked about year. Give me Boise State. I'm also going to go Boise State. Yeah, Boise State. I I have not watched a single minute of Mountain West football, but I'll, I'll I'll take Boise State in this one. All right. Moving on now to the SEC. This is one of the bigger games available at 4 p.m. on CBS. The LSU Tigers ranked number 14 versus the top dog in the country, the University of Georgia 
Bulldogs. Uh, I've I've loved what I've seen with Georgia. They they they're having one of those uh, amazing years that people talk about for a while. They, they're just they're just a complete team. They're a complete team, and I think they're going to put a pounding nationally on TV against LSU. Give me Georgia. No no chance of an upset here, in my opinion. I'm going to go Georgia, but I I was like oh maybe maybe a small upset alert here, but no. I, I'll take Georgia. I'll take Georgia. I'll, I'll go with the safe pick. Yeah, I think we know how these champ SEC championships goes, but yeah, Georgia, the Bulldogs, reigning champions, the, they'll take this one against the Tigers. How crazy is it that we haven't seen Alabama in this for a while now? It's true. We can't. Well, well, what was that? The it was it was the Alabama heartbreaker. Yeah. yeah let's see. Got the win. Onto the SWAC Southern. Love the Southern logo, by the way. The powder blue and yellow. It's like the Chargers. Oh my God. Anyway, the Southern Jaguars versus Dion's team. Jackson State, the Tigers. Ooh, you know you have all those. You have all those rumors and Dion. I believe Dion's actually going to make the announcement on Sunday on where he's going to go after this season. I think USF was one of the teams that he had mentioned that he was interested in. Um, His contract done after this year? Yeah. His contract's done after this year, Dion. I I I believe it is. Yes, it is. And. uh, and again, it's Dion. It's prime time. Yeah. You know, how, who wouldn't want Dion coaching their exactly. team? Um, give me Jackson State. They have a really solid squad, and they're one of those super small teams that get the recognition they deserve again because of the high quality coach they have. That's you know, yeah. is trying to make a name for himself. I I could see Dion moving up the ladder, coached in, in the pros. So give me Jackson State here. I'm also going to go Jackson State. You know, Dion. They have a very nice team, and they've also been very good with their recruiting. I think they got yeah. one of the, the top players in the nation um, this past season. Travis Hunter. Know. Travis Hunter. There it is. And he's been playing yeah. both on offense and defense, so he's been a stud. And uh, I do believe he may go to UCF. I think that is the team that I eventually believe Dion will go to. I also think that he'll have a scene. I think it's the stadium construction, so that's what he wants. So, yeah, give me Jackson State. Yep, uh, I'll take Jackson State. They've been, you know, dominating the SWAC. Um, Deion Sanders obviously did a great job with that. Um, but yeah, I think I, I do think obviously I think he'll he'll obviously go to another uh, FBS school. But uh, I think this time he will uh, end off send it off happy with a, a championship for uh, Jackson State. Mm-hmm. Moving on the list, only two more left: the ACC, Clemson versus North Carolina. I, I actually watched in full the other day the. Um, the uh, game against the Tar Heels and uh, NC State and the Wolfpack. Uh, I really was not that impressed with North Carolina. They, I know they had some great games earlier this season. You saw what they get, did against teams like Miami. Um, but yeah. uh, Clemson, again, it's, it's one of those dominant teams. The ACC is just, it's, it's just struggling for some competition against Clemson for a while now. I'll take the Tigers here. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm taking Clemson here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Uh, you know, they, they had a little dip last year, but you, Clemson's kind of back on the yeah. the wave, and uh, I think they get their their next uh, coastal title uh, coming up Sunday, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. And the last game on tap at eight p.m. The Big Ten Purdue <laughs> against Michigan, the number two team in the country. I mean, kudos to Purdue. They had another they had another surprisingly good season, but they're running into a. Uh, a Michigan team that again just knocked off Ohio State for the second straight year in Columbus. Uh, they planted their flag on the midfield logo. I mean, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I mean, who would who would want to play Michigan right now? Uh, Wolverines. Yeah, Wolverines. That, they may go all the way too. They yep, could. taking taking Michigan. Uh, surprisingly enough, FAU played close with Purdue back mm-hmm. in October. Adding to that, but I do think Michigan, they're, they're, they're the best team, one of the best teams in college football right now. Honey, you keep bringing up FAU. You're honestly worrying me here a bit. <laughs> I'm just – I'm, I'm FIU all the way. I don't, know, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, all right, so that was your look at conference championships this week. And, and then, of course, next week and the next few days after that it will be some of the uh, bowl games on tap. Let's quickly look at – FIU men's basketball. Just want to briefly touch on this. The next episode will focus a bit more on on uh, men's basketball as the season sort of ramps up and we get into conference play. Okay. Suffered a loss against Eastern Michigan um, following their uh, quick invitational where they did go two and zero, beating Stony Brook and Eastern Washington, but fell by a score sixty eight to eighty on against Eastern Michigan. They have a they have a couple of non conference games left against Florida Gulf Coast and Howard before they play their first conference opponent. 
um, I believe, uh, FAU. And then down the line into the coming months, it's going to be conference teams. Uh, I'm like, I, I think, you know, four and three might not indicate, oh, man, this team's going to be amazing. But I do like the growth. I'm Again, do like the growth I'm seeing from this uh, super young, super, but still pretty talented FIU squad. Yeah, and this is something we spoke about here, that if there's a comparison between FIU football and men's basketball, it's that they're very, very young. So I uh, definitely like to see the growth, the positive mm-hmm. record here. So I have not watched much FIU basketball. I plan on doing that. So, mm-hmm. you know, with football season over, I'll definitely have more time for that. And um, I know Johnny's been there for every game, or at least almost every game. So he definitely has a lot to tell us. Yeah, um, yeah four and three, but, yeah, it was a, a – a, a, Tough loss yesterday against Eastern Michigan, um, a game where Coach Ballard was really disappointed. And, and, and FIU was up 12, um, you know, in the first quarter. They had an eight-point lead into half. And unfortunately, you know, East, Eastern Michigan, they, they they had Imani Bates, obviously, you know, Farrakhan. Those are really key guys that Stan Heath brought in recruiting. And FIU, you know, couldn't win the game. Denver Joe's didn't play as well. Um, yeah, it was um, – it was a tough loss. I do think this team, though, is is still really, really good. They have a lot of pieces, but I think you, you said it best, you know, Jake, that this team, they're still young. They're gelling. Um, they're still trying to see what works well with chemistry and, and what recruit and what players work in sync. But uh, I do think this is a good team, but they, they have a really a good matchup against on Sunday against Florida Gold Coast in, yeah. in, in Fort Myers, where they got to take care of business. They got to get the win against a good Florida Gold Coast team, but Still, I, I do think that this this is a good FIU team in store, but got to got to get wins, and it starts on Sunday night as well. And to to give uh, FIU some credit, they have a really nice winning streak against Florida Gulf Coast going on now. I believe it's I believe it's five games. Um, yeah. Again, the Florida Gulf Coast is one of those programs where they've done great in the uh, they've made it to the tournaments and they've done. They, well. they beat USC this year, first game. Of the yeah. Year, so. so we'll see we'll see where that takes us and. Uh, Again, uh, young team, but it, but some great haymakers. Again, you have players like Javante Hawkins, Seth Pinkney, and um, Krabakovic that we've seen last year. Again, their growth and their and their development into some of the stars that FIU um, has now. So, again, a recent loss, but still a four and three record going up against Florida Gulf Coast this Sunday, December fourth at six p.m. can be seen on ESPN Plus. All right, Johnny. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a Jonathan Mayer podcast if we didn't talk a bit about FIU baseball and Rich Rich Witten, the brand new coach for the FIU Panthers, um, has some ties to South Florida, but was but has spent the last few years at uh, Virginia Commonwealth. Will be replacing uh, the goat Merville Melendez, and will hopefully get the FIU baseball team back on track here. We're just you know, when, when you first heard the news, what were your thoughts? Were you expecting Rich Witten to be the guy, or who, who was under your radar for the next coach? I, I know you didn't want to admit it, but yeah. <laughs> I, mean, honestly, I, I, I mean, honestly, I, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking a guy like him who's who's young, up and coming, and he has a lot of energy and, and good and good vibes around him. So that was, I think, that was a great hire Scott made, and he's yeah, thirty four years old, one of the youngest mm-hmm. coaches of D one baseball. I like what the direction he's going to bring with this program. I did go to uh, what was it, the Blue and Gold World Series like two, three weeks ago. You know, some free baseball to watch. Who doesn't love that? Um, yeah, I, I'm excited for this team. I I think just a, a new a new sense of direction for this program, a new voice. Um, you know, Rich Rich brings that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, we're 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 like we're two months away, about till yep. season starts. So I guess you all guys, and hopefully, I can bring talk more baseball then. But I like what they have. I know Alex Sanchez is bad for another year, and he's a guy that he's he's a he's a potent star in this lineup. Bring some good transfers in. I know they brought a guy from Miami, Mikey Rosario. Mm-hmm. So they have some good stuff going. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm so excited for baseball. But yeah, I guess hoops is our thoughts now. Baseball will, will come soon, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited for for baseball season coming up. I have to start doing my my baseball research, so you're going to be helping me a lot yeah. out here, Johnny. <laughs> of course. Man, yeah. It sucks that they didn't try to go for for Jeff Conan as the head coach. You know, he was there one year with. Yeah, FIU that was that was cool. cool. Now Marlins. now Conan is bumped up and is back with the uh, the Marlins. That's yeah. cool, man. I'm so happy for Jeff. He, and shout out to Jeff. Though I I do want to briefly discuss this time, uh, Johnny and I when I, I believe it was right after Conan was uh was announced as joining the um. 
the uh, FIU baseball staff. You, Johnny, you and I were 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 had had like a private meeting with uh, Merv as well as Jeff. I believe Liam and Adrian were also there. And shout out to Liam and Adrian. And uh, we we just had some great some great uh, conversations with um, both Jeff and uh, Merv. And at, at the end, as we were wrapping up, I, I quickly said to Jeff. Hey, so what are your thoughts on the Marlins? Just uh, Miami Marlins, just what do you thought? And uh, he he gave me a look that he wanted nothing to do with the uh, Miami Marlins. That he, he 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 like pretty much brushed the question off. He was like, "This is twenty twenty one." Yeah, this, this is twenty twenty one. Right after he was hired, um, this like, is the Jeter then. Jeter was yeah, still yeah, there. Okay, that makes Jeter's sense great. then. Because let's be yeah, honest, he's a, he's yeah, a sharp he, guy. He, he said, "Oh, I don't know many players on the roster. I don't even know what the name of the damn stadium is." Uh, and and to see him now, you know, oh, I'm blessed and humbled to be joining the uh, Miami Marlins. You know, um, he's excited. Crazy he's to see really that happy. <laughs> we we sent one of our guys out there to talk to him on the uh, Thanksgiving food drive. He's pumped. I'll tell you that much. He's happy. I don't know if you guys listened to a podcast he was on very, very recently. If not, I'll send that to you guys. But he spoke a lot about what he wants to do with Miami now, mm-hmm. help out in the minor leagues, visit the affili- affiliates. His son is on that uh, on, on the minor leagues, still uh, Griffin yeah. Conan. He's in double A. So let's hope he does not get picked up in the Rule 5 draft, which uh, I believe is this week. So mm-hmm. I don't think he will. Hi- un- highly unlikely with the extremely high strikeout rate. and uh, But the immense power is there. So – um, that's the good thing about Griff. So we'll see what happens, but yeah. I'm excited. Jeff is back with the Marlins. Um, for the ones who have not listened, not know me on pause up here, I cover the Marlins for fish stripes. So, uh, I'm on, I'm on this stuff every day and it's, it's fun. And, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll probably talk, some, we'll sneak some Marlins talk every once in a while. On yeah, that. of course. Um, rich, rich, uh, rich Witten, by the way, uh, used to be an assistant, um, for the University of Miami, uh, Ooh. back in like I believe it was 2014. That's his tie to uh, the um, matter of South matter Florida of, uh, area. Yeah, um, I was gonna say matter of fact, this year I think they played the Miami four times. They used to play them two, but they'll play them four times: two at home, two in Coral Gables. That's other things to add on. So that's yeah. cool. Um, yeah, that's gonna be sweet. Yeah, be I, I, I remember when you and I made the trip to. Um, what, 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 I, I, I want to get this right. It was Mark Light Field. Right at Alex Rodriguez something Park, something like yeah, it's like yeah, it's something like that. It's they're, it's they're, like they're, one they're, or the other. It's something. yeah, their milkshake Dude. slap. You gotta give them credit. Their milkshake slap. Yeah. It's All right, is it is it NFL time? I think it's NFL time. You you want me to take this over so I can? Yeah, can sure. Go, sure thing, Kevin. Go for it. All right, Johnny. We're gonna do some NFL predictions here. Uh, we go down each game, and uh, we're just gonna see who wins and loses them. We'll look very, very smart for the picks we make, and then we'll look very, very dumb. So we're recording yeah. this on Thursday. Patriots bill still going on. So yeah, seventeen um, seven. Uh, oh, okay. I, so at, at this very moment, Bills ahead. Bills ahead. We want to predict that, or what's the move? <laughs> yeah, uh, no. I mean, I mean, the Bills are going to win. Let's be honest. Yes, duh. I mean, right. now this <laughs> the, is the prime they're, time they're, game. Prime time game. Such a scary team. Yeah, the they're, Bills. Yeah, they're very good. righty. the the real game of the week: Dolphins versus 49ers. Jake, who you got? Ooh, this I, I'm like still shocked. Game. This was not flexed to uh, to to the night game. Uh, I, I know been. I know Miami's game next week uh, against the LA Chargers has been flexed to Sunday night, which is pretty dope. Love that cup, Kevin. I, Love it. I saw the cup the first. Time. I was like, damn, that's a cool cup. Uh, was that like from the ballpark? Yeah, it's one of the ones that you the, that you get at the ballpark. That that, that 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 looks like a stadium cup for sure. Those are the ones that you just save and you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really dependent on if Austin Jackson and Teron Armstead can somehow get back into the lineup and play against San Francisco. They have a, yeah. a they the you have, you have Bosa on that team on the defense, and then you, and then you go on. The offense, and you see all the haymakers they have. Jimmy G, who is playing, who is having one of his best seasons, like an underrated great season with San Francisco. Um, but I have faith in the Miami Dolphins, right? Um, in recently, like we've seen what Brad, what Bradley Chubb has done, he has resurged this Dolphins defense, and and uh, both teams, I believe, come into this game on on winning streaks. Uh, it's going to be a super super. High octane offense, offensive game. Uh, I I don't think two is going to struggle. Uh, 
I think um, Raheem Mostert, obviously a welcome back party for him, along with uh, Mike McDaniel as well. Let's not forget. Yeah. Uh, it's if, and, and Jack Wilson. Former team, yeah. Uh, I I really do think the Dolphins have what it takes to, to knock down the uh, San Francisco 49ers on the road. But... I, okay. uh, I the dreaded but I I I don't know I feel like between both teams the their momentum levels I think San Francisco has the more momentum heading into this game because of uh, obviously you have the the monster that is Christian McCaffrey on their team uh if Miami's offensive line was perfectly healthy I would feel like they can do it, but I just have this bad feeling that Teron Armstead and Austin Jackson won't be ready for this game. And because of that, I'm going to have to go with the 49ers here in a close one. It's going to be close no matter what. Yeah. Just the amount of storylines that, you know, mm-hmm. get into this game. McDaniel coming back. We don't know if Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel will play. They're questionable at the moment. So, yeah, I, I pray Christian McCaffrey plays number one because he's on my fantasy team and I really need him. Oh, and okay. um, fantasy, you know, right. and number two, Christian McCaffrey's a fun player to watch, and I want to see what Miami could do against someone like him. So, I'm still gonna go 49ers here. I think this mm-hmm. will be an extremely close game. This this should have been the Sunday night football game, in yeah. my opinion. But you know what? It's okay. We get it at an earlier time. We get to watch it earlier. And that's nice because we don't have to wait all day. But yeah, I'm still going Dolphins. I'm, I'm oh sorry, I'm going 49ers here. I think the Dolphins <laughs> will suffer their first loss in the Tua Tago Viola 2022 season. Uh, keep in mind, every game he started and finished, he finished, he is eight and oh, he is undefeated. So, yeah, um, just keep that one in mind. And then, um, Johnny, who's your pick? Well, I, you know, the fan of me, I'm gonna say Dolphins. I mean, okay, I mean, the first, yeah, the first time, like, you think of in a while where you know they actually have. Difficult games coming up, you know, no Texans, you know, obviously a little close, a little close second half. Texans, a little scary there. Texans, no Browns. Like, we, we got a, a, a good team, a team that, look, Kyle Shanahan, he knows what Mike Man- Mike McDaniel does. You know, this is, this yeah. is like, think about both, both these coaches know what each week, each, each, each play, you know, each coach's weaknesses or strengths are. So this is going to be a game where it's, it's going to be really, really tight, but, Weapons wise, I think this is uh, evenly. Yeah. But I just think from a coach perspective, both both they know each other like from so so much. But I'll take the Dolphins a little bit more. Um, just the the defense step up. That's my only thing. The defense, you know, I think they were a little bit sloppy and, and didn't care in the second half against the Texans. They played well in the first half, but I think the, t- the defense has to step up. Um, and, and kind of stop. You know what what what. Uh, the 49ers are trying to do on, on Sunday afternoon. And I want to mention, this could be a very, very low-scoring game. You you mentioned it, Johnny. These, That's true, yeah. These, these coaches know each other extremely well. They will be countering plays like crazy. That That's how I see it happening. And, you know, these guys have been together with in Washington, in Denver, in um, ooh, where else they were, San Francisco. These These guys know each other extremely well. Um, this Kyle Shanahan coaching tree has been extremely successful, and that's how it's been with McDaniels. I want to give a shout out to Kyle Shanahan, who has had a very good coaching tree. Let's be honest. Uh, the Bill Belichick one has not been the greatest. This one has been the Kyle Shanahan one. So, yeah, unfortunately, I think the Dolphins will go to eight and four. There's no playoff clinching scenario for Miami this season, this year. I mean, this ooh, this game, anyways. So, yeah, nothing to really worry about. A win would be nice because I believe then after you kind of have a shot at clinching. Yeah, at the East. At some point, you got to have a chance to clinch it, so it'll be soon. Any last words, Jake? Do you want to? Uh, yeah. The, the last thoughts here is that um, this is this 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 is a playoff. This fe- this feels like a playoff game. This is a oh, massive right. game. Super Bowl. Dare I say Super Bowl? Pre- oh, 100 percent. Right? <laughs> this could be the, this could end up being the Super Bowl. Let's be honest. But going, it's a big game, and for these big games, you need to have big time experience, right? And you have a, a more veteran coach of Kyle Shanahan. And again, uh, players like Christian McCaffrey and, and Jimmy Garoppolo, who God, he almost won a Super Bowl. He, he was so close to winning a Super Bowl, Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. The, exper- the experience in these big, massive games really, really does matter. And uh, I think that's the really big advantage that San Francisco will have in this game. But I want to say this, and I'll counter this. You mentioned experience with coaches. Josh, um, Mike McDaniel's beat Bill Belichick. He beat John Harbaugh. He's beat Mike Tomlin. He's beat some damn good coaches. Sean McDermott, Buffalo. 
So yes, experience, but man, Mike McDaniel has has gone against the odds, and he has pretty much beat down some teams. Yeah, that you would expect the the Dolphins to lose against at the end of the day. Yeah. But you know, you still make a good point. The 49ers have the experience when it comes to playoff, Super Bowl time played in the NFL. They're they're the more experienced squad. To a you know, not the most experienced QB yet. He will make the playoffs this season. Yeah, and um, you know, Miami will. We'll get that experience. They'll all have a year under the, their belt for that one. So uh, I'm still going to go San Francisco. I think that's a clean sweep. Oh, no. Johnny went Dolphins. Um, yeah. All right. Steelers, Falcons. I'm going to go the Falcons. I like I like Atlanta here a lot. I know Steelers are a gritty team. They remind me of what the Miami Heat culture is a little bit, how the, how the Steelers are. But um, I'm going hmm. Falcons. I, I just like that. This NFC South, I want it to be more interesting than it is already. So. Falcons here, and they'll move on to six and seven. Jake, who do you got? The Steelers to the the Ste- comparing the Steelers to the Heat is a, is is a comparison I, I I never would have guessed. But the more I'm thinking, I thought of it, of it just you're, now. Man. You're you're onto something here. Um, maybe I'll 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 go Falcons. Uh, I'll go um Falcons in this one again. They're at home, even though I'm sure the Steelers nation will travel well. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing with Marcus Mariota again. Maybe he he might not be the best passer in the game, but is. But his pocket presence and just the ability to scramble and make some big plays happen, you gotta love it. And um, Atlanta is pretty much the only team in the NFC South that, that can really give Tampa a run for the money down the stretch. Uh, and and I'm still not sold on Kenny Pickett. I don't I don't want to say bust. I really don't want to say bust. They 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 of course had the win against Indianapolis on Monday night, but we'll see down the line if that win is really credible again with. Uh, Jeff Saturday is the brand new coach there. I'll go Atlanta here. All right, John, who we got? Ooh, I'll, I'll go against. I'm taking Pittsburgh. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh not so bad. They took down Tampa in overtime last week. They, you know, they they're a little riding high a little bit. You know, I I think that this Pittsburgh, you, Kenny Pickett still is a little a little iffy, but I do think that the defense will find some way to prevail and. I think they pull it off. It'll be a close game. I do think low scoring affair, but I'll take Pittsburgh in this one. I think Mike Tomlin has the upper hand against the uh, the young coach for for Atlanta. All righty, Broncos versus Ravens. This is actually going to be a very interesting matchup. No, the it's Ravens. not. Come on, no. it's the Broncos. Wait, wait, look, 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 look. Hear me out. The Ravens <laughs> just recently lost to the Jaguars, so they're kind of on a low here. I do believe the Broncos are horrible. They may be. I, I know there's the Texans, but these guys may be the second worst team in the NFL. So yeah. I'm still going to go Ravens. This is going to be an absolute blowout. Maybe Russell Wilson gets a touchdown or two. Ravens are still yeah. going to blow out the Broncos. I would be absolutely shocked if Denver keeps this close and even pulls up the upset here. But Ravens, Look, man, this is easy. Ja- Jacksonville is a better team than you think. Okay. Oh no, they're really they good. Played their yeah. guts out against Kansas City, and, and again they had a, you know, Trevor Lawrence is is kind of reminding me. How I felt about about Tua his first and second years here. He's got he's going to be a great great quarterback. Just needs time and he needs weapons. Um, uh, I'll I'll go Ra- I'll go Ravens here. I just I I just hate what I'm seeing with with Denver and it's a shame because I, I really do love Russell Wilson. I thought his when he when he was with Seattle he was he was just a phenomenal quarterback. Great guy. I believe I believe he's even a um uh, a Walter Payton Man of the Year recipient. I want to say. I I believe so. I, I love Russ, but he's not cooking. And uh, he's going to ride to another L this week, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> Give me Baltimore. Yeah, man. It's it's weird. Russell Wilson, you know, you, you would have thought that maybe a little resurgence here this season. But no. I mean, he's always been a very consistent quarterback. But I guess Father Time's catching up to him, I guess we could, yeah, we could say. Unless this is just a big down year. Hopefully they're good next year. But Nathaniel Hackett's been horrible. We mentioned yeah. this, I believe, on their last show. He's, he's just sucked. He, he will definitely get fired. If he's not fired, I would be shocked. All right, Johnny, who you got? Ooh. If you oh, yeah. stop saying ooh, this is not a ooh matchup, Johnny. It just there's there's just so the no team just feel the same. Like they're just so like oh, disappointing my. years. Okay. You just don't know like who has the, the advantage. I'll take the Raiders. I, I don't know. I, I think you know Broncos, they're looking right. a little bit more, you know. Or Broncos, offensive. Ravens, not Ravens, not Raiders. Oh, Ravens. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were saying Raiders. Okay, I'll take the Ravens. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Packers. That's, that's too easy. I, 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 yeah, too easy. Close I thought you were talking Raiders for a second. <laughs> Packers and Bears. Is Justin Fields playing this week or no? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have so. no idea. 
All right, then I'm going to take the Packers. Yeah, oh God, I, I, I this week. Uh, uh, old, yeah, old, old man, old man Rodgers is in. Uh, I actually would have loved to have seen Jordan Love get get some get a start. It would have been crazy, but uh, man, at, this, at this point, you just got to give. You, you just got to start love and see what's cooking there, man. He, I mean, but what what really I think is going to give Green Bay the advantage or Green Bay the advantage or yeah, is uh, Chicago's defense. You saw what the, what they let Mike White. People think Mike White is the Messiah now just because he beat up the uh, the He's Chicago pretty solid, defense. Though. And, and it, yeah, he he looked good, but the sh- Chicago's defense just looked flat out horrible. And I'm thinking uh, I'm taking Green Bay by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers still owns Chicago, uh, as he likes to say. Give me the pack. Give it to us, Johnny. Yeah, I'm taking the Packers. You know. Yeah, I just think they're a veteran team down year a little bit for them for Aaron Rodgers and company, but Packers is a game you got to win in an in division matchup. All right, next game, the battle of the two teams that are pretty fun to watch, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Detroit Lions. Ooh, I this love this gonna, matchup. This so is going to be fun, man. This is going to be a good one. This may be one of those games that – I'll have to rewatch the highlights of that. Yeah, no, I don't think anyone's going to watch it live, but everyone's going to want to watch the highlights after. Oh the game yeah, happens. and and it's going to be and it's going to be definitely one of those games you want to watch on the red zone as well. But I'm going to go Lions. I like what Jared Goff has been doing these past couple of weeks. He kept it extremely close on Thanksgiving week. Um, there would have been five and six, kind of still in the hunt for a playoff spot. There, they still currently are technically because the NFC has just not been that good this year for some reason. But um, yeah. Give me Detroit. This is a fun team to watch, man. Their defense with Aiden Hutchinson has been pretty good. I know they're one of the worst fantasy defenses, but, I mean, if, with hey, Aiden Hutchinson has just been one of the better rookies in the yeah. NFL this year. Just some spoken of because of, you know, Sauce Gardner, how good he's been, the, uh, George Pickens, I believe, the other rookie there. So, man, give me Detroit with this one. Uh, oh, man. I, I The Lions are absolutely a, a, a better team than what they're their record of 4-7 and seven might say. They, if if Dan Campbell remembered what timeouts were, they would have beaten Buffalo. I I feel confident in that on, in Thanksgiving. Um. Uh. Okay. So both teams are four and seven. It's in Detroit. It, it it could be a coin flip, but between Jared Goff and Trevor Lawrence, I know Trevor Lawrence has been balling as of late, but I do have a bit more faith in Jared Goff to um uh, in this matchup. Give me Detroit. All righty, Johnny. Yeah, they're the Troy. I'm taking Detroit. They're a very good four and seven team. I think last week Buffalo. The, the, I mean, they, oh, best best Thanksgiving game in a, with Detroit in a long. That time. was a fun yeah. game. Yeah. So I'm taking Detroit. I, that team is scary. They're going to be a legit next year. I just think yeah. this yeah. year, you know, that they they've been playing close games, but they'll take it to another level next year. So I'll take Detroit. Um, this 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 Sunday. This is the game of the week. This Real is what, huh? Of the week. No, no, no. This one I'm about to mention right here. The Cleveland Browns facing off against the Houston Texans. The return of Deshaun Watson. If you have the Cleveland Browns defense on waivers, pick them up. Because Mm. they may be dropping some big points against Houston here. Now, could this be the upset game of the week? Deshaun Watson, maybe not, you know, 100% in terms of game speed. He only played, what, one game? In the preseason against the Jacksonville Jaguars, that's about it. He's been out. I'm taking the Texans. They will get a win against the Cleveland Browns. This is my wow. upset. This is my upset game of the week here. This is this is it. They uh, will they will spoil Deshaun Watson's first game back. He will be 0 and 1 as a Cleveland Brown. Wow. Uh, so okay. So first thing, there. God, there's so many. There's, there's so, so much many to think lines. about for this game. Uh, yeah. With obviously, with all the media circulation, with all everything that Deshaun Watson has had to uh, 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 listen to and, and deal with this uh, during this season, he's not going to be ready, a hundred percent ready for this game. There's just no, there's no way anyone could be a hundred percent ready against the former team to play. Yeah, and then you add that on against his former team um, in in Houston as well. The fans, I, 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 I wouldn't be shocked if every like at every snap. Every snap that Deshaun Watson takes, like in the huddle, he's gonna get booed at. This is oh, not gonna be one of those happy, oh, you know, you were a great player for us and you're coming back. No, oh, it's great to see you again. No, this is gonna be the exact opposite, and for good reason. Um 
at the same time, uh, at the same time though, I st- I still trust a a discombobulated Deshaun Watson over Kyle Allen or Kyle or Allen Kyle. or Davis Mills or whoever the hell is going to be the quarterback for the okay. Texans this week. Um, it it would be it would. It, it would be like a feel good thing for the Texans to beat Cleveland. Um, they've had a pathetic year. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do in the draft. If they're going to go after Bryce young or somebody, um, they better, they could have all the momentum and leading up to this game. And it's still not going to be enough. I don't think they'll beat Deshaun Watson. I don't think they could beat Jacoby Brissett either. Uh, give me Cleveland. I, 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 I will give, I will say the Texans, It'll probably be like a low-scoring tie game at halftime, but then uh, Deshaun Watson and the Browns are going to make the adjustments and they're going to take out the Texans. Okay, what do you got, Johnny? Ooh, yeah, this is this is gonna be an interesting one. Tech, I don't know. I, I do know this the whole Deshaun thing. A little, you know, has been been a big thing going on. I guess for me, I'll take Houston. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know. If, I don't know. If Brandon, I'll take. Yeah, I'll take Houston. I think it's, I don't know. If Brandon Allen starting. Kyle. Kyle Allen, is he starting right? I, it should be. I don't know. Uh, what, well, it depends, yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll take for I'll take for a little for a trap game. I'll take I'll take I'll take uh, Houston with their second win. All right, Mike White against Kirk Cousins, Jets versus Ooh. Vikings. I'm going oh. Vikings. I'm going Vikings. What? Yeah. Vikings. What? One p.m. Kirk is scary, man. One p.m. Kirk is is an absolute menace. He is, is a home game for them. At one p.m. Yeah, it is. It, it oh, is unfortunate. 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 The Jets, ooh, the Jets, the Jets, the Jets. What can I say about the Jets except um, I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. Zach Wilson was not that guy. He he he's not that guy, right? Uh, I just had a bad feeling about about good old Zach. And um, I'll and again, I'll, I'll give Mike White some credit. Uh, he he looked really good against the Chicago defense, but I don't think he's going to look as good against a tough Minnesota defense. Uh, yeah. Again, Minnesota is one of those teams that. They're again nine and two record. They're uh, they they had a nice win against New England on Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, I'll 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 take Minnesota here. It might be close in the first quarter, but then the offense for the Vikings is going to slowly ramp up. And again, pro- one p.m. Kirk Cousins is a menace. Uh, oh, for the Vikes. Yeah. yeah, you are certainly right. Kirk Cousins between prime time and one p.m. is he's a, he's a different person. But I do like my I do like Mike White Mike White in in New Jersey New York, you know, get a little little revengeance and but I'll take I'll take Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. They're, they've been really good this year and I think we'll continue on strong and uh, they'll get the win, secure it. This is actually a very important game here that I'm about to mention here within the division. Definitely will have playoff implications. It is Commanders versus Giants. Mm. This is a fun game. This is oh, going to yeah. be a fun game to watch. Ooh. Oof, this may be the hard game to predict here, man. This is going to be an extremely close game. The past years, these matchups have been very, very close, if you guys know about that. I'm going to take Giants. Gut feeling Giants. Gee, man. At home, I like like the Commanders. I like the Commanders, but I'm going to take the Giants here. Not by much. This could be like that that game-deciding field goal or that final second touchdown that gets scored or even an overtime game, but – I'm gonna go uh, Giants. Um, <sighs> uh, so I I love I love Saquon and and on the and on the New York Giants, he's been one of their key weapons. I I I absolutely love the season that Daniel Jones has had. It probably one of the no joke the best quarterback seasons so far in the NFL has been has belonged to Daniel Jones with the lackluster offensive line that he has, the lack of weapons, obviously aside for Saquon and. Uh, but I, but I also love Scary Terry and uh, Taylor Heineke on Washington. Um, I wouldn't want to bet this game. It's going to be so damn close. This could be one of those uh, low scoring can go to overtime kind of games uh, where the you know both teams will have a shot in overtime. They'll have the ball and they're a field goal with like five seconds to go. Well, uh, one of these teams will win. It's a coin flip. It really feels like you have to flip a coin for this one. Both teams are even. Um, uh, I'll go with, I'll go with the uh, 
New York Giants. I'll go with the New York Giants. The big reason for me is because the Giants are on a two-game snide. They're back home in MetLife, and they real and they have the talent to be like a, a really great team in the um, NFC. Maybe make a playoff run and and, and make some noise there. Uh, they had that tough loss against D- uh, Detroit, and then uh, the Thanksgiving loss against Dallas. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, mm, Washington has all has. Uh, it's a, this. I think this is the toughest game to pick this week. No joke. Uh, tougher than Miami, San Francisco, even. Um, I'm gonna quickly change my answer. Give me Washington. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, agree, with, I'll agree with you, Kevin. I'll take the Commanders after giving it. A I, I took the thought. Giants. Keep in mind, I took the Giants. Oh, oh, you took the Giants. Whoops. Oh, uh, uh, I had to give it a second thought, but I'll take the Commanders. Okay, that's. You could go either or, honestly, yeah. man. You're right. This is a close game. I, I I think I know the Giants have been slipping a little bit. You know, they had a really hot start, but now they're kind of, you know, they're they're still seven to four, but you know, they're not as the team that they were beginning of the year. Um, I think Washington's riding high, a little more momentum, you know, with Heineken in, in the in the gun, shotgun. Um, I, I'll take commanders as well. I just I have a gut feeling that like, you know, it'll be a close game, but I just think Washington has that push late in the season that they have so far, and I think they will take this this big time win. And I want to quickly mention that at this point, I believe all NFC East teams will be making the playoffs if the season ended today. So that's crazy to think how good the NFC East has <laughs> turned. Never, never they used to be horrible. Think about they it. Were like, you know, yeah, they were like the. I think, what was fire. it? Two years ago, the Commanders were seven and nine, and they got in. Like, yeah. Or no, yeah. the Cowboys were 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 like they they were they hosted a division game, but they were like one of the worst teams. Yeah. Yeah, and I also do think you're right that the Commanders did get in that year. And they and they put up now, a good fight against Tom Brady. Now that was the debut of uh, Taylor Heineke. Now yeah. it's Taylor Heineke, yeah. All right, this is gonna be another fun matchup here: Titans versus Eagles. Oof, the Eagles could clinch by the way today uh, in, the, in this game with a win. I believe that is the playoff scenario for this week. Also, yeah, the Vikings they could clinch as well with a win. So technically, we all chose Vikings; they would clinch. I'm gonna go Philadelphia. They will clinch, and they will be making the playoffs God. in 2022. Feels like I feels like the the Eagles have been playing at home for like the last five for like the last three months. But um, uh, uh, Jalen Hurts is having an unbelievable season. Uh, so is AJ Brown. That that duo, it, it I think that duo is like you know on the same level as Tua and Tyreek, just absolute balling out. You know, the backbones of the team. Uh, yeah. I like I like Philadelphia's offensive line more. I like their defense more, and I like their quarterback more. Um, I I think Derrick Henry can only do so much in this game. Uh, give me Philadelphia. Yep. Yeah. Up, Johnny. This is gonna be super fun. Is this, is this Sunday night or Monday night football? This is a. Um, this is one p.m. This is one, oh, 1 p.m. p.m. Yeah. Wow, that's gonna be probably Jim Nance on the Jim Nance and Tony Romo on that call. But uh, ooh. I like the Eagles. The Titans are a good team. Ah, I'll take Philly. They're, they're they're playing well this year. Just keep it going. I'll take Philly. Seahawks Rams. I'm taking the Seahawks. I believe. Ooh. Okay, yeah. That with with that's a four o'clock game, right? Yeah. Um, this is this is a yeah four o five game on Fox. Uh, oh, the Ram- I, Stafford's still not in, right? No Stafford. No, no it is um, Perkins yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, no Stafford, no Cup equals no win. Uh, give me the Hawks. Yeah, yeah, I'll take Gino and the Hawks. All right, this is this is gonna be a fun one here. Um, AFC Championship matchup from last year: Chiefs versus Bengals. This is a fun matchup, yes. man. Yeah, we got we got good stuff this week. Yeah, dude, this this may be the best week in football. Maybe. Uh, I'm uh, I'm taking the Bengals though. I'm taking the upset. I think they'll do it again, and they're playing in Cincinnati this time. <laughs> They're the upset. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Because well, the Chiefs are. Um, you know, I actually I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go Cincinnati on this one too. Uh, oh, Johnny's just saying no. Oh, no, Johnny's shaking his head. All right, what? What? Why is Why is Kansas City winning, Johnny? No, I just I they're they're rolling. What was it? Didn't they like they they almost they lost? It was like a four twenty sixteen against Tennessee last time they played. Bengals. I don't know. Yeah. I think Kansas City. They're the team. They're nine three. Patrick Mahomes is the guy. 94. I just, I just, I don't know. I'm just not the biggest Cincy, Cincy person. I don't know. 
Okay. I'll, I'll, I, I do not like the Bengals as well. I'll tell you that now. I don't know. I, I, just, I, just want to, I just want to be the guy that doesn't take the effort. I'll take Kansas City. I'm going to okay. go ahead. I'll just go All right. Chargers, Raiders. I'm taking the Chargers here. Actually, no. Secondhand thought. I'll go to the upset. I'll take the Raiders. Ooh. I'll take okay, the Raiders. Okay. I, I like it. I don't know if Josh Jacobs will play. I hope he does because he's also on my fantasy yeah, team. A monster and game. Josh 300 scrimmage yards. Hey, 51 points on fantasy. I'll take mm-hmm. it. Who you got, Jake? Uh, I don't know if Denzel Perryman's going to be in this game for uh, Las Vegas. Um, regardless, uh, you know the the Chargers got the Chargers got very lucky with their win against Arizona. They just grazed by that game. Um, uh, it, it's it's close. There are there are a lot of close games this week that could really go either way, depending on a last minute drive. Um, but I have more faith in Los Angeles, but though not by much. I think Herbert has had a good season, but he has not had a great season, in my yep. opinion. He's been good, but he hasn't been great. Uh, but I think he's he's done. He's been miles better than Derek Carr and the rest of the uh, Raiders uh, offense, though. So I'll take uh, the Los Angeles Chargers. Okay. Yeah, I do remember that. Remember that game last year? The, the final. It was the final game of the season. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I do think the Raiders, they, they're playing more better. As I said, I, 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 I confuse the Raiders and Ravens. So I said, I think I took the Raiders. I'll take the Raiders over LA. I don't know. I think the Raiders are, they're, they're looking like a team that they should have been into early into the season. Yeah. hundred percent Colts versus Cowboys. Jeff Saturday's what is it? His third game. I wanted to see this story where Jeff Saturday leads the Colts to the playoffs, but Little by little, just doesn't look like that will happen. I'm taking the Cowboys. They'll go to nine and three. I still don't understand why this game was not flexed out. Uh, this is a Sunday night game. And, oh uh, yeah, it is. Well, it's the Cowboys. Yeah, this is not an They're impressive. Not really it's not out. an impressive matchup. You could have put the Chiefs and Bengals. That would have been a great one. You could have put Commanders, Giants, or Dolphins, 49ers. Those all would have been much better primetime games than this. Uh, yeah. Give me, give me the Cowboys. Not much, just not much to really say here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Cowboys gets the cards. And before we get to the final game, uh, just a quick reminder, the teams on by are the Carolina Panthers, who stand at 4-8, and eight, and the Arizona Cardinals, who are also 4-8 and, and have been underperforming big time this season. All righty. This should be a fun one here. Saints versus Bucks. Two teams under 500 trying to get to the top of their division. Ooh, who has it at, the, at this moment? Is it is it the Falcons who are at the top, or is it – um, let's see. Yeah, no, Tampa's at the top, but not yeah. by much. Five, right. You know, the, the NFC South has become the new NFC East, right? Uh, all, no one in the NFC South has a winning record. Yeah, this is, this is turned into the NFC East, as you mentioned, but I'm going to take, you can never doubt, uh, doubt Tom Brady. I'm taking Tom Brady to beat. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll Doug take Tom. Thomas Brady the goat in a, in, in a big game to yep. turn the season around. To win the to win the NFC South, uh, you, you just you 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 have to trust Tom in a game like this. Uh, yeah. And I'll take Brady in the in the in the Bucks. Yeah, I'll take Tampa in this in this in this matchup. I just I, yeah, I think they need wins. That's that's really you know they lost a bad game against the Browns. If I'm correct. Yep. So, I, I think this is a Saints team that's still. Eh, I'll take Tampa. And I'll let you finish it off, Jake. All right. Johnny, any final thoughts? Again, thank you for joining the show. You've yeah. been a really great guest. Happy to talk some FIU. Uh, what, 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 what are you feeling, Johnny? Yeah, great time just talking to FIU uh, as we kind of approach a time where we got only really hoops. I mean, we got we got mm-hmm. some swimming and stuff, but really all hoops, and then we got you know holiday break coming up, which will be fun. But yeah, um, you know, right now. Football's out, soccer's out, but still, you know, we're kind of hitting a stretch where we got so much going on. Yeah. So into the new year. What what what's your what's your way too early prediction for baseball? Wow, baseball. I mean, my way too early prediction is we as uh, we win thirty five games and we go to a regional. So. Hey, uh, I like yeah, the sound of that. First year head coach doing that, I love it. All right, again, thank you, thank you for being on the show, Jonathan Mayer. Again, uh, to those to those listening. Uh, Thank you again for uh, uh, following us on uh, the Pause Up podcast to get a brand new show. We're only in our second episode now, but the love we've seen on the love, the growth and the love we've seen on social media has already been super awesome. And, and Kevin, I can't thank you all enough. And yeah. 
And again, next week we'll be back talking some FIU hoops, maybe a bit more baseball and maybe some yeah. new storylines here and there. You never know. And yeah. uh, so for Kevin and myself and our guest Jonathan Mayer, we say thank you for watching. And until next week, pause up. Thank <laughs> you.